Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Don't Get Your Hopes Up, the show that we do every single week. Uh, my name is Josh Allen, a.k.a. Lore, and joining me like he does every single week since we started doing this show, without exception, is uh, Mike B., a.k.a. Phony. How's it going, buddy? Good to be here for another week in a row. <laughs> yeah, this is feels good, man. Yeah, we're. I'm really proud of how how consecutive all of our episodes are. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the key to a good, you know, a good long running show is consistency. Yeah, you know, yeah. people look forward to it, and you, know, you want to be able to provide it to them yeah. so they can work it into their own personal schedules. And um, I know that it's good. It's good that we do that. Yeah, I know the first thing that I always think of when I think of this show, like if I could describe this show in one word. That word would be weekly. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> no, that's good. Yeah. Reliably weekly. <laughs> yes. Like if I could just add something on there. Yeah. Unerringly weekly. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier today I said, let's just not even let's not even bring up the fact that we were we haven't recorded for a month <laughs> let's just not let's just pretend like we've just been doing this week like it's fucking it's beautiful god damn it yeah uh, no we went the opposite direction not only good way. not only did we not mention that it hasn't been a while <laughs> we insisted that it's been regular <laughs> unerringly unerringly yeah uh, uh, so yeah, a few things, uh, a lot of things have happened since, uh, the last episode. We're not going to talk about most of them. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, skip, I'm a little bummed again. that we missed out on the, on the, on the girl that got kidnapped slash ran away slash just didn't have her was... phone on for a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Really? Oh God. Yeah. It's, it's funny. Cause like that story, I I know people who were very very heavily involved on either side of the argument, like uh -huh. people who were like, oh my god, I'm so worried. We had no one's heard from her. Oh my god, this is scary. And people who were like, she's just taking a day off. Fuck, who cares? <laughs> like it was it was interesting. Yeah, but we're not gonna talk about that because no, no, I'm I'm tired of the discussion already. <laughs> um, <clears throat> speaking of things that I'm tired of already. So Ark has raised its price to sixty dollars. <laughs> so here's the thing: this is actually this is actually interesting because this is one of the first times that we're really seeing, uh, not not the first obviously, but one of the first times that we're really seeing a early access game try to claw their way out of the early access description without just sort of removing the flag at some point and just saying, oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. we released a while ago. So they have set a quote unquote release date for Ark. And I, I seriously I cannot I cannot take I cannot take it as a serious release date because this game's been out for two fucking years. Um but they've set a release date for this is when the released version of Ark will come out. Uh and as a result have now raised the price to it like immediately raised the price to sixty dollars. Not it'll be sixty dollars at this release date. They've just immediately raised the price to sixty dollars. Um and so that has obviously caught a lot of people by surprise. And there's one person in particular that we're going to talk about in a second, but I want to I want to I want to hash out this whole arc raising their price thing first. Yeah. Um <clears throat> It's like a double story. It's like here. a double story, yeah. Um so first of all, this is a major missed marketing opportunity in my opinion because they could have said, "We have a release date. It's this date. So buy early access now because the price is going to go up later." Boom. Like, I would buy ARC right now. I'm not going to buy ARC now at $60. Instead of getting the, what, $30, $40, whatever it was up to at this point out of me, they're going to get zero because I'm just not going to buy it. Um, <clears throat> and I I was talking with some people about it earlier today, and I, I honestly, I believe that most of the people who are, most of the people who would spend $60 on ARC have already purchased it, in my opinion. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because, like, it's been out for a while. So I don't know. I think it's I think it's a weird move. Uh, like I, I think I don't I don't begrudge them raising the price. I just think they should have said like the price will be raising at this date. Buy it now while you still can at the early access price or something. Yeah, it, it's 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 weird. It's like I they they said that they're gonna raise the price. Everybody knew that it was whenever it come, comes out of you know early access, they were gonna raise the price, and so then they did it. Um, not announcing it, it's like, I mean, I could kind of see both sides of it. It's like, well, 
on one hand, it would be good guy Greg to be like, hey, so we're going to raise the price soon. Buy it now. Uh, and then make, you know, a ton of sales from people who are just like, oh, shit, well, I should buy it now. Because technically, by announcing it, you're putting the game on sale for $30, right? Yeah. <laughs> when before, the game was on sale for like $10. And so it's kind of, from a from a sales perspective, you, you, you could look at it like that. It's like, oh, yeah, I could reap all these sales from people at, at the current regular price from people who would, uh, you know, otherwise uh, uh, wait until like another sale. Um, but then on the flip side, you know, there's the whole issue with, um, God, fuck it. They, they probably just thought, yeah, we'll, we'll make plenty of sales just by switching to 60, like, or maybe sales have slowed so much that we won't get enough. Or those people that were going to buy it for $30, will buy it for $60 or whatever kind of shit tier logic. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I can't imagine <laughs> the logic behind doing it that way, but I understand that they probably, somebody there was probably like, yeah. you know what, if they would have bought it by now, it's been two years. And they're probably just fucking pull the trigger. Yeah, like there's there's certainly an interesting discussion going on about like should should they have warned people before or did like is the warning that they gave before enough? And that's all coming from a perspective of what was the quote unquote right thing to do for players or potential players for Arc. I don't give a shit what the right thing to do for players <laughs> for Arc is. I'm in marketing, okay? This is something that <clears throat> that I can understand. I could tell you right now. They made the wrong choice for their game. They should have, 100% categorically, and every single person in marketing will tell you this, either they should have done something else entirely to come out of the early access, or if this was their plan, they should have said, we will be raising the price in a week, or we'll be raising the price in five days, or two days even. Like Any amount of, you better buy it right the fuck now, would have been such a dramatic win for them because a whole lot of people who, uh, like me, I've never purchased Ark, I've never played it. Uh, I'm, I've always had a kind of passing interest in it, and I know a bunch of people mm -hmm. that are really, really into it. And so it's always been a game that I'm like, oh yeah, maybe I'll pick that up once, it, once it's a little further along in development or check it out at some point later on. But now I'm not going to because I'm not going to spend 60 bucks on it. Like, it's a game yeah. that the hype has passed, like... I, I, I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of past the point where I think it's worth sixty bucks anymore, and that I think is the really really interesting thing about this. Not just from Arc's perspective, but from early access in general. Like PUBG is going to have to think about this at some point. This is something I'm actually really worried about for PUBG uh, because it's one of the most successful, possibly the most successful early access game that we've seen so far, just in terms of overall reach and how much people are talking about it. Like I can't. I literally I cannot walk across a building at Blizzard without overhearing someone talking about PUBG. Like, that's how... Yeah. That, and that's at a fucking competitor, right? Like, Yeah, exactly. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere, yeah. Uh, it's got such massive reach at the moment. There's people starting tournaments for it. People like, oh, how do we make this an eSport? Like, serious people. Like, not... Not the, the Joe Random, like, uh, YouTubers that are like, oh, I'm going to be the guy who figures out how to make this an eSport and make tons of money off it. I mean, like, serious eSports organizations are looking at PUBG and going, okay, this is really popular. How do we make this happen? Mm -hmm. um, they are in such a good position, but they've basically already released. They are never, they're never going to get more reach than they're getting right now uh, unless they go fucking crazy with marketing dollars later on which is technically possible but like we're talking billions of dollars in marketing for them to beat what they've got right now uh, and this is the worst the game will ever be <laughs> and that's a real like this is, at the very <clears throat> least the, the most unfeatured that the game will ever be and that's yeah. a really like how do you deal with that how do you how do you take that well we've got we've got so much reach, we've got so much word of mouth, people are just, the game is just flying off the shelves figuratively, it's flying off of the steam, uh, but we've still got so much to add to it. Like, how do you actually deal with that? I don't know, it's interesting. Well, we didn't, we didn't see PUBG go on sale, and I think there was a reason for that. There's mm. a lot of people that are upset about it. In but, the Steam sale, you, you know. know. Yeah, yeah, the Steam summer sale, sorry. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, there's a lot of people that are upset about it. It's like, what the fuck, you can't mark your shit down for sale or whatever, or whatever logic they had. Um, and I think it makes sense. It's like, the, there's no point in putting a game that's like the hottest game right now and then yeah. discounting it. Like, you're just, you're just cannibalizing your own uh, revenue. Um, but in terms of, but, but you know, regarding uh, ARC, by the way, I should note that if you buy the game right now on Steam at 60 bucks, you have to pay uh, an additional... Uh, there's 15% off total. So it's like 67.98 will get you the 
like 67 something because it's 15% off will get you the game plus the DLC. So they do discount the bundle, but you oh, still have to right. buy the DLC. I forgot they yeah. had early access DLC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh it it's it's a bit shitty. I don't know if that same deal stands for uh Xbox players. Um I could probably ask my brother or here in a text. I know he's up probably playing <laughs> it right now. Uh, but yeah, it, it's very possible that they don't get the discount. So they'd have to pay, you know, the $60 plus $20 for the, uh, for the DLC. Um, yeah. So that was kind of shitty. They should have just included that, honestly. Yeah. And then it wouldn't have been so bad. It's like, oh, well, it's $60. It's $60. Well, I mean, you're getting the DLC. You're just paying an extra $10 because you waited too long to buy it. Like, I mean, I feel like that's a good argument, you know? Yeah. Yeah. At the very <laughs> least, at the very least, if it included the DLC, that, that you yeah. can. That you can try to sell people on. Like, no, this is mm-hmm. the ARC release edition. It has everything. The complete ARC experience or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. ARC. ARC Game of the Year edition. <laughs> <laughs> ARC Remember Us edition. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the extra interesting thing about this ARC story came up on Twitter when... Uh, this This pains me. This this exchange pains me as someone who occasionally has to deal with developers saying shit on Twitter that they shouldn't have because they didn't fully think through what they were about to say or mm-hmm. weren't aware that something was a hot point in the community or whatever. So Dean fucking Hall, rocket <laughs> rocket of uh, of Daisy fame goes on Twitter and is like, I cannot believe that Ark would raise their price to $60. This game is not ready for release. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that it's worth this much. And you look at his tweet, and every single response is like, The fuck, bro? <laughs> <laughs> LOL, you're kidding, right? Every yeah. game of a game called Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Uh, and then he said, "Have you ever heard of a straw man argument?" And then the guy replies again. He says, "Bro, you made millions off Daisy, then bounced." <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. And then he's, "Yeah, why are you attacking me and not the argument I make?" He's like, I guess. Oh, it's Draper. He's like, I guess you. I guess you would know if, if a game was finished and charging more than it's worth. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. He got super yeah. fucking salty. Like, <clears throat> super fucking salty. Uh, it's it's pretty funny like it, it honestly was just one of those like all right dude like regardless of what your actual opinion is you're a game developer you don't get opinions anymore <laughs> you, <Yeah. laughs> if you share if you share your opinion on something look at notch <laughs> yeah exactly well like even it's especially bad like when with gaming opinion like notch at the very least people can go okay he's a shithead but he made a good video game like that's at least something <laughs> But like when you say billion dollars, yeah, billions. Sorry, plural. Yeah, but when you're like giving opinions about game design, like I always have to like every once in a while I'll be playing a game and I'll get upset about something and I'll be like I should I I want to tweet because that's just how I am. I'll be like I want to tweet about how I'm mad about this video game for whatever reason, uh, and then I have to think about think to myself like wait are people currently mad about something similar in WoW, and if the answer is yes. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep that shit to myself. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure. I'm sure you have heard it. Mm. I am certain that you have for sure. Tweet something random and it's like, and someone somehow finds a way to tie it into like their fucking yeah something something oh, yeah. they're sh- the shaman or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. There's always some some sort of agenda that people tie it back into. <laughs> the, the the best of when it's like completely unrelated. Like I'll be like I don't know. Uh, be like, man, why is it always that the only time I ever want Chick-fil-A is on Sunday? And someone will be, reply with like, well, why is it every time I want to enter a raid as an elemental shaman, I can't either because no one wants me? <laughs> and those are the sorts of tweets that I'm always tempted to reply with, like, some sort of shit like, have you tried deleting your config WTF and World of Warcraft <laughs> folders? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why you have the salter, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that thing's great. Yeah. I, it's become, it's actually become like fucking legend around Blizzard now. Like somehow, <laughs> I haven't even, I don't, I don't know how this has happened, but like people keep walking through our, because I sit right next to, I sit literally right next to, uh, the head community manager for Overwatch. Um, and so people come through, people come through for a while all the time. People come through for Overwatch all the time, and we're also like where we're sitting. 
people occasionally think it's a hallway because of how the desks and such are laid out. Um, uh-huh. So people just walk by all the time. And other people, like it used to be that I would explain to people, they'd be like, oh, what's your little altar here? And I'm like, oh, it's the Salter. Um, it's the the yellow lady of sodium. It's uh, the goddess Morton. And may her umbrella <laughs> ev- ever protect us and provide iodide, a necessary nutrient. Um, wow, so, you really put a lot of thought into this. Oh, oh yes, I have. Um, and now other people have started explaining it. And like bringing people over from other buildings to be like oh, oh you got an angry tweet here put it in this box because i got like a little offering box with a slit in the top of it that you can like print out tweets and put them in the box uh and eventually it's gonna get full and i'm gonna have to like have a ritual burning of the salt or something like that oh my Spread god the like ashes, the office space style salt or something like that. yeah jesus but yeah it's just 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 in case you're wondering um daisy is indeed still in early access yeah yeah. The release date it went into early access December sixteenth, two thousand thirteen. <laughs> Jesus. I <laughs> know, we're approaching four years. Yeah. Four years of early access. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus. No, I remember I... I remember the first time I played Standalone Day Z, and that was one, two, three, four, five desks ago <laughs> at Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> Five of my oh, six God. desks ago at Blizzard. I'm trying to I'm trying to see if there's a way that I could just look up all I know there is. I just want to look up all early access games, just all titles. I think I've done this before. And then I basically just went through and filtered until I found the uh the oldest one. And Daisy was up there with like mm. the oldest in terms of here you go, release yeah. date. Oh yeah, this should be it right here. Did Prison Architect oh, yeah. ever come out? <clears throat> yes oh yeah it did okay. yeah it, they went one point out they were really good with that like honestly that was like an ideal like ideal example of how early access should work they came out they were like uh i think the pricing the pricing was set kind of high it was 30 dollars, and it felt like it was kind of high for the time but their idea was we don't want to get too many people in the game we just want to be able to to get enough people in so we can get the feedback so we can actually eventually make it to release mm. Um, and then they had these very regular updates. And even if you've never played Prison Architect, just go watch any of the Prison Architect update videos they did. They're hilarious. Mm-hmm. Like they they have such great chemistry. They could talk about almost anything, and I would watch. Nice. Um, and they go over like all the updates and everything they do. And then it was it was very regular. They'd post updates. Uh, they were very responsive. And then they went to 1.0, and it was kind of like, all right, well, we went 1.0. We're feature set and everything locked in, and all this stuff. And it felt like they were going to take a break. And then a month later, they're like, hey, so we kind of got some more stuff coming, and it was fucking great. It's like the whole Prison Architect Architect experience was just really really good. Yeah uh let let's see oh here we go just dance just to follow up on the oldest games uh actually space engineers has a daisy beat oh. by by two months days daisy or space engineers october 23rd 2013 jesus uh project zomboid november 8th 2013 rust December 11th. Rust is still in fucking early access. <clears throat> yep. I just looked for the early access tag. Seven Days to Die, 2013. Fucking Wreckfest. God damn it. Next car game. So much potential. And just, I don't even know what happened with that. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. These are old. Yeah. Damn. The oldest one, though, the oldest one is Airmic. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that was still it early access either. The oldest at uh, November 8th, 2012. How does it? Wait, hang on. How the fuck is a free-to-play game early access? Also, <laughs> that doesn't make any actual I sense. Just think they, I just think they forgot. <laughs> <laughs> they made like uh, some sort of deal with Steam. Like once you have this feature list in the game, then you can be out of early access. And they just like decided to scrap one of those features, and Steam is like just sticking to it or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow, it fucking looks like Airmac just took a dive, a nose dive. Um, I wouldn't recommend this game for anyone who doesn't like to be touched. I only had this game so that I could be touched. It was hot. What? Okay, that's, that doesn't help me at all. <laughs> uh, that was great fun when it first started and the devs decided to listen to everyone, which you and I were there. Yeah. Um, after a couple of years, the greed got in the way. They partnered with Ubisoft to get in consoles before the PC version was beyond alpha. Then they 
decided to patch the consoles before furthering PC. Soon after, they decided to go VR and make separate versions specifically for VR. Finally, they started listening just that they started to listen to only the most hardcore top tier competitive players, which turned the game into some cheap mobile game. But hey, I don't understand that sentence at all. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, <laughs> but hey, uh, buy more cosmetics and maybe get Air Mech Prime for a single player experience campaign, you know, if they decide to actually follow through with it, of course. And then there's a TLDR that's uh, equally as long as the actual <laughs> review itself. But um, too long, but yeah, didn't I read. guess. Here's the version of that <clears throat> post that's just that post copy and pasted. Yeah, the, the general consensus here seems to be that the Xbox version is better. Hmm, I believe it. It always played better with a controller on PC. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Man, I really, I really, really liked that game as, as a concept. I liked watching it. I liked yeah. playing it. It just never caught on. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it was a shame. It was. I think it was a little too complex for a lot of people. And that was also around the time that League of Legends was really, really going full steam, like in terms of oh, growth. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. obviously it's still huge, but like that was when everybody was getting into League of Legends. It was mm-hmm. like the Wrath of the Lich King phase for League of Legends. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, so yeah, Ark uh, is finally coming out of early access, and apparently that was a huge mistake. Jed fucking stayed there. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> TLDR. <laughs> uh, and Rocket thinks he's, Rocket Rocket agrees it should just stay in early access. <laughs> he doesn't even work on Daisy anymore either. Like he no he left, no, no no. So yeah, he's got he's got another he's got um uh, Station Years, which is oh, a yeah. uh, uh, it's a Astroneer and Space Engineer. It's an it's a near game because apparently that's a fucking genre now <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. so uh speaking of uh speaking of arc uh near games by, by which i mean speaking of speaking of near games by which i mean speaking of space engineers by which i mean speaking of games that are dying a long and long slow and painful death uh, Firefall <laughs> is apparently getting suspended <laughs> and like the servers shut down and stuff and like the initial announcement was apparently that they were just going to stop working on it everyone was like wait but you stopped working on it like a year ago um, and then today Mark Kern I guess decided he hadn't had enough attention lately so he goes on like Twitter uh, I think it was on Twitter I don't remember exactly it was like, oh yeah, uh, they're they're gonna actually just shut down the servers entirely tomorrow. So today is the last that you can spend your in-game credits or something. <laughs> Which was like, but if it's getting shut down tomorrow, what the fuck am I gonna spend my in-game credits on? That's <laughs> the point of that. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. Like I, I feel bad. Like I have a lot of uh, I have some some acquaintances that work at Red Five, and there's a couple of people that I know that either came from Red Five or went to Red Five just because it's the gaming industry, and like you. You spend enough time working at a game developer, eventually you kind of know people at every game developer. Um, yeah, pretty much. Like, I know I know people that work on Lineage 2. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because the industry is very incestuous in that regard. Oh, like, yeah. There's just people go from, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like working with local bands. I used to work with local bands back in the, uh, in the, in the O's. Um, yeah. And, uh, and it was just like that, too. Like, you'd work with one band, they'd break up because they never fucking got along. <laughs> and then they go, and then, like, the guitarist and the bassist would go start a, a band, and the drummer and the singer would start another band. And then they would all fucking break up, and it just kept on, like, spreading. And yeah. the game industry is just like that. And you'd have the same sort of, like, that fucking guitarist is such a dick. He just keeps hopping around between different games and always... <laughs> <laughs> or different different bands and always trying to blah 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 and then you have Mark Kern doing the same exact fucking thing. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Um so yeah, Firefall is apparently shutting down entirely, which isn't it isn't surprising. What is surprising is that it's actually it's actually kind of similar uh to the arc thing we were talking about as well. Is that they were literally like, "Yeah, by the way, tomorrow <laughs> shutting it down." It is. It is. The quote is Red 5 Studios from Mark Kern has decided to shut down Firefall effectively tomorrow, July 7th. That is that. I, yeah. That's it. And that was put out today. Yeah. <laughs> and like, he doesn't even, I don't think he's even associated with red five anymore. Like, I think he's completely out of red five at this point. I have no idea. I think he's just a professional. He left in bang. 2013. 
uh, like yeah, like 2013 he left, and then I thought he came back. Like he, he may I have been like he was because he was voted off of the board at one point, or voted out of yeah. the CEO position by the board, or, or however that works. Um, I, I haven't watched enough Suits to know how that sort of thing. <laughs> Don't worry, works. you'll get a taste of it in Silicon Valley. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> uh, It'll refresh your memory. Okay, good, good. Um. <laughs> But yeah, like I, I don't, I don't think he's actually related to the game anymore. So it's like, well, he's saying we, so he's got something there. Okay, yeah, he must then. Ah, well. Either way, Firefall. Yeah. The Firefall was a game. Like I actually, I'm sad about. I'm sad about what happened with Firefall because that was a game that when it was first in like the original, original, like it just went into beta and only a few people had access to it at the time. I was like, holy shit, there's so much potential here. I actually remember, like rage quitting Terra on stream because I was so mad at how shit the fucking combat was in that game. <gasps> I kill you. <laughs> I, 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 we have dis disagreed vehemently about this in the past. I remember having those conversations as well, but Jesus, we fuck, that game was fucking tombstone. Boring. Laura is wrong about Terra. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hated that game so much. It I, seriously, I rage uninstalled it on stream because I was just like completely <laughs> seeing red. Uh, and I ranted and I was like, you know, a game, and in hindsight, this sounds really fucking stupid. But I was like, you know a game that's going to do really well because of their action combat? Firefall. And I went and I played Firefall for a little bit. And I was like, look how good this is. Look, you move around, you shoot, you aim, and this is great. It's going to be awesome. And, like, there was there was actually so much that it had potential about it at the start. Like, the the way that they did mining. Like, you were looking, I was looking at that and comparing it to, like, WoW. Like, in uh, in WoW, if you're mining, you walk up to a, a thing, you right-click on it, you go tink, 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 and now you've, you've finished yep. your mining. But in Firefall, it was you call down a thumper, and it starts mining, but because it makes a ton of fucking noise, it starts getting attacked by all the indigenous life. And so you have to defend the thing while that thing does the mining. And I was like, this is cool. This is like gathering resources in a way that's engaging and, and fun to play. And then they started talking about how they were going to do all this crazy esports stuff with it, none of which ever happened. And then they started... That was, I think, one of the problems, honestly. Yeah, they started talking about, they were like, we're going to revamp the entire quest flow and everything, <laughs> and that never got finished. And it was just one thing after another of this game never quite actually... They like, just kept changing their idea about what the game was supposed to be constantly. Um, yeah, and that was the core. That was the core of the issue, I feel, with... Uh, with Firefall is that they kept changing everything about the game constantly. Um, God, here it is. 2010 Twimo notes, episode 15 <laughs> Firefall announced people, people have known who are on the project. Mark Kern team lead for world of Warcraft, Scott Young, boy lead designer on tribes and tribes Two. It is a, what it is a free to play, uh, free to play team based action. MMO claims hundreds, claims of hundreds of players in a large scale co-op gameplay, uh, and then blah, 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 all this stuff. And so there's basically a lot of you know, notes here, because this is our notes from the old days, right? Uh, it's also mentioned in, uh, let's see, several other episodes. It's mentioned in episode 30, 39, mm -hmm. 45, 56, 60, 66, 87, 107, 115, 127. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to 127. I'm just, I, I didn't do any prior research here. I'm just going to see... What it says about Firefall, you know, this is now two years later. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's talking about Planicide and it mentions it or whatever. Okay, so whatever. But we know that it just it just could not find a direction. Remember yeah. that crazy spectator cam thing that yeah. they had? Yeah, they were talking about it's going to be like, oh, this is how you spectate. You need two monitors, and one of the monitors <clears throat> is watching everything going on in the match yes. all at once. And we were, like, talking about it. I remember, uh, I don't remember if it was on Legendary or even if I was, like, on an episode of Twimo talking about it. But we were like, how is this going to actually, like, this, this seems very system intensive. And we're talking about, like, <laughs> four years ago that we were having this yeah. conversation. Like, pre-several major advances in uh, <laughs> computing power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it's a game, it was a game that, it, it seriously, it changed... Uh, it changed entirely too many different horses entirely too many different times uh, went way way overboard on marketing in stupid ways like you remember Firefest 
or Firefall Fest or whatever it was called. Yes, where they got that bus or whatever, right? Oh, so Fire Yeah, they had Good. they had a thing called Fire Fest where they brought out like every popular streamer and YouTuber at the time, which was like five people because streaming hadn't really taken off yet. Yeah. Um, but like they had Day9 on there. They had um a few random other people on there. I don't remember who. Um couple of like major youtubers uh, and i think they had like felicia day or something on there also i don't remember exactly <laughs> i mean yeah, given the year yeah, yeah i believe it um and then they also like separately they got the giant ass fucking bus and this is i, I want i want you to know i've learned something about that bus very recently that was absolutely uh -oh. hilarious it couldn't drive I I heard that they, as a rumor. No, it's it, it really can't true. drive. Yeah, like I wow. Like I say, I know a lot of people in the industry, and I had the opportunity to talk to somebody who actually was working in marketing on Firefall at the time. Uh, and yeah, the thing they had to put it on a trailer, <laughs> to drive it around everywhere. Oh my god! <laughs> so like there were so many pieces hanging off it though. Like it was just such a like a. It was a cosplay in mm -hmm. and of itself, you know? Yeah. But yeah. So, Firefall, a uh, good example of how not to game design. Yeah. God, we talked about it so many times over so many Yeah. It so had many so episodes, much promise. So many years. It had, like... And, and then, yeah, it says... So Firefall saw a massive patch this week, along with the dev diary explaining it. Then it links to the dev diary. And then the questions that it's asking, it's like, you know... What do you think will really... Here it is, right here. What do you think will really sell Firefall? The PvP or the PvE? We're two years later, and we're still yeah. discussing... We're still trying to figure out what we, just a couple of podcasters, think will help sell the game. Yeah. That's, that's a fucking problem. Yeah. That was around the time where they were like, oh, we've been putting so much into the... Like, they'd been putting so much into the esports slash PvP side of it, and, like, it wasn't working mm -hmm. for reasons that should be pretty obvious um and we're we're pretty obvious to us at the time as well um and so we were talking about well they're going to revamp the pve should that yeah i remember that that was ugh. poor firefall poor red five yeah it sucks it because it's seriously there was so many there were so many good smart intelligent things about that game there were so many really really smart designers and developers working on that game and it was just shit leadership. Like, they just kept changing their minds about what the game was going to be over and over and over and over and over again. And you'll never release a product that way. Like, one of the, one of the core things about game design is learning to understand when something is not quite right, but you need to go ahead with it anyway. Or when something isn't necessarily the best it could be, but you need to go ahead with it anyway so you can flesh out the rest of the game. And then you can come back and fix that thing later can come back and change it later that's what we call iteration uh mm -hmm. but no they just kept going well this tiny piece isn't like this tiny piece that we haven't developed any of the content for it yet feels empty and like it's missing a whole lot of content let's take the game in a different direction <laughs> yep, fucking idiots <sighs> makes me sad i always hate i always hate when games that look like they have so much promise end up uh just having so much so much trouble ever getting to a point where uh, people can actually really get into it and really play it. Such as... Uh, mm -hmm. Fucking Cube World. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, I have my own game that has a lot of promise, actually. But yes, yes, Cube World is a good one that all of us are very familiar with. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> well, for anyone who wasn't around in those days... I want. That's how long it's been. I, yeah, I want. I want to believe that both of our audiences have somewhat grown since then, considering that was like Wait, five fucking years ago. Uh, so Cube World is a really fun game <laughs> that was early access. Like if it, it probably, honestly, it probably predates early access on Steam. Uh, not quite. Not but quite? it's very okay. close. Is that July? July second, two thousand thirteen. Yeah. Which is, like, probably six months or so after. Yeah. Seven months. We got to play, like, a really, really super early alpha version of it ages ago. And had so much fucking fun with it. It was really, really fun. Even in its, like, really basic, like, one dude, Wolfram, Wolfram Puck, or what, or Wolfgang Puck? Something like that. <laughs> Wolfram yeah, sure. Von Puck. 
Something punk. Yeah, that's it right there. There we go. Ben Funk, Funk, Bon Funk. funk. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. So, Steve Buscemi, when he was working on this game... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it literally was just one guy, one dude just hacked this thing together, and it was really, really fun and engaging. Like, guy has a really, really good sense for game design, and then he went completely dark, like, quiet, like, absolutely nothing yeah. for, like, years at a time. And then he'd pop up and be like, hey guys, yeah, I'm working on the map today, and he'd post a screenshot, and everyone would be like, oh, Cube World's not dead, oh my god. And then another year yeah. of silence. And now, yeah. And now recently, this motherfucker is tweeting like once every other month, like sometimes multiple times in a day about new features that he's added. And so it's like, yeah. we've got to be, we've we've got to be. Like I know, I know the name of the show is "Don't Get Your Hopes Up," but I, we've got to be getting to a point where he's actually going to release something at some point. Either that, or it's literally just he feels like he's talking to a few of his friends about this fun side project that he's been working on, <laughs> like. Like, he's got That's a train set of, in his yeah. basement, <laughs> and he's like, hey, guys, look at yeah. this thing that I added. That is kind of the approach, it feels like. You know, yeah. like, he's he's just kind of openly discussing these things that he's putting into the game uh, with his buddies. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, we're at the point now where it's... The anger, I think, has subsided for most people. Yeah. Right? The anger and frustration. Well, frustration's still there, but the anger is gone. We were mad when, you know, a year out where it was like, man, like, what the fuck happened? He just, like, disappeared. He took the money and ran, all that stuff. Yeah. But now that we've seen that he has actually been doing what everybody at the beginning said he does, when everyone was like, why isn't this guy, like, followed up with another update? They were like, this is what he does. Yeah. That was it. Everyone was like, the people who had been following it before anybody knew about it, they were like, this is what he does. He just goes dark and then he tweets like every fucking month or something. And now that we're, you know, three years out or something, uh, yeah, no, f- I'm sorry, four years out uh, as of this month, uh, now, now it's like, oh, okay, yeah, he does tweet every other month or whatever. Um, and it's, it's stuff that looks promising. And so now, uh, I'm not, I'm not mad because yeah. the, the stylistically, I think the game has, uh, is going to last for a very long time. Oh, yeah. Um, and he picked a great art style for, for this style of development. Yes. Uh, and then when he, uh, and then, and then, you know, we all, we all know the combat is fucking great. Mm-hmm. It feels really good. It's a good feeling game. And when the game is released, even if it releases, I said this earlier in discords, like if he releases on steam, I'll buy that bitch again. Yeah. Like I will totally like 20, $30. I will fucking buy that shit again because I will, I will log hundreds of hours in this fucking game. Guaranteed. Yeah, I will spend sixty dollars on this game and buy the DLC. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he's he keeps really. What was the most recent recent thing that he he put out? Oh, he has some kind of like artifact thing, I believe. Um. Uh, let's see. I want to say it was some kind of uh, artifact system or something that whenever you get an item, here it is. It's say artifact. Yeah, artifacts are special uh, special items which add new mechanics to the game. Here you can see two of them in action. So he's basically uh, he's playing it too. I don't have the audio on right now, but yeah, he's using a couple of these things, and it looks good. All the mechanics he's putting in look really, really good. Yeah, yeah, like his city map that he tweeted. That looks crazy. two months ago. Yeah, it looks great. Hmm. Like, it's, it's clear that he's putting, like, he tweeted twice in May. One was, like, here's a city map. It looks really, really cool. And then previous to that, it was he's reworking capital cities. By the way, those didn't exist and haven't existed in any version of the game <laughs> that anyone yeah. outside of... Yeah, reworking capital cities. Yeah. <laughs> but, that's, like, this, this makes sense. This is what this guy does. Like, he is clearly someone who uh, he starts working on a game. And this is a this is just a a passion project for him. It's not yeah. he's he's not necessarily trying to pull a notch and make a shit ton of money off of it. He this not, it's why he's not in early access, uh, etc. Like this is just a guy who wants to work on video games, and he's just happily plugging away at this by himself when he has time. Like I don't know, maybe he works at like a fucking Starbucks or something. It doesn't matter. Like it does. He has some sort of day job. I imagine has to. 
uh, some yeah. sort of income somewhere. Uh, and so he just comes home sometimes like, yeah, man, I'll work on this little video game a little bit. And I can, like, I can actually totally identify with that as someone who's been working on a card game for, like, four years now. And hasn't, yeah. I've done nothing with it. I've done nothing. Yeah. That's, I can't, it, I cannot identify with this guy, actually, because he seems to actually be doing yeah. work. Because you haven't up, you haven't posted an update once every few months. Mm. This is your problem. Yeah, that's what I need to do. You're, like, an annual updater. Yeah. I did decide yeah. recently that I need to scrap most of what I already have been working on, so... See, yeah. yeah, yeah, and I mean, he even says he says here's a short clip showing the new 64 bit engine. You don't just like unplug from a 32 bit engine and plug into a 64 bit one. Like yeah. that's <laughs> that takes some work. So yeah, he's definitely been like you just said, like you know, doing a revamp, right? He's definitely been digging in and doing a lot of work on this. So I'm I'm I am now content with just letting him just yeah. do his thing. And you know what? When the game comes out, maybe maybe my son will be old enough to like enjoy it. <laughs> and I could I could play this game with my kid. You know, yeah. it's 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 totally that kind of game. It's very age uh, age. What do they call it? like age agnostic? I believe or something. Um, but yeah, anybody could play this and have fun. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely got that. Like it's basically it's Minecraft with a little bit more gameplay, with a lot more gameplay um, and a, less building. Um, but it's that sort of like visual appeal that you can look at it and say, okay, yeah, this isn't going to, this is an art style that isn't going to look like shit in 20 years. Mm -hmm. Like people kind of like, uh, it fits in that same sort of general category that like SNES games did where like you can go back and play Chrono Trigger and you don't fit, spend the entire time going, wow, this game looks like shit. Like it's just not yeah, something that matters. Yeah. Link to the past. Link to the yeah, past. Same yeah. Thing. Ocarina of Time, however, that game looks like shit. <laughs> <laughs> That is fucking true. <laughs> that is true. But the intro gets me every time. It does, yeah. <laughs> uh, <sighs> so there was another game that you wanted to mention. I was talking about oh. games that die a slow death or something. No, no, no. Then... We we're talking about uh, games that have huge potential. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, this is this is kind of like a, this is basically a what what I'm playing right now type thing. Mm. Uh, this game came out called Starship Theory. Um, it is... Uh, what well, you know prison architect so it's basically it looks like prison architect on the surface in space um it's got some ftl elements uh you can you can build out your ship like like manually like you customize it same way in prison architect how you could design the entire prison like and, and draw the walls and the, and the fences and all that stuff you could do the same thing in a starship theory Right now, the game is like crazy imbalanced because there's a lot of just rng involved with how things work like uh if you're unlucky enough to have a hostile pull up while you are um uh before you have you have access or enough resources to make you know just even a single laser turret then you're fucked i actually had that happen and this is how this is how bad the rng is right uh i was i was just flying along and it has phases it's like you know you might be you might cross over a star and then you have to put off fires you might go through an asteroid field which is where you mine and then you might have a uh somebody pull up next to you and it could be a vendor or it could be a hostile in this case it was a hostile and i had no, i had nothing so i basically was like well that's it i'm screwed i'm just gonna sit here and just let them just blow up my ship and then i'm gonna start i'm gonna start over again uh and then we ended up going through an asteroid field just out of luck an asteroid field and not every asteroid will hit you sometimes even though they're coming towards you they'll fly overhead right so you don't know until they actually clear your ship completely if you're going to get hit mm. they fucking got hit by an asteroid oh, nice. and and fires start all over the place and then eventually they all fucking die because they couldn't put out the fires enough because it did so much damage <laughs> the hostiles did so even the hostile npcs suffered from bad rng nice. so so right now, and and that kind of stuff happened in FTL. You yeah. know, if you if you're in a in a uh, environment environment that is you know constantly doing do uh, damage, then um, they'll suffer from it as well. And so that's that part I like customizing and building out your ship and and kind of this little colony management almost. Um, I also like, and then you manually uh, mine things, so you actually can hotkey you know certain weapons to certain keys, and then you could just hit one, and then that's my mining laser, and I have to run it, and then I have to turn it off every once in a while so I don't overheat and start fires everywhere. Um, there's a lot of potential in this game, a huge amount of potential in this game. Nice. And, and yeah, it just, it just got released like day before yesterday or something like, yeah, something like that. Um, nice. But yeah, yeah. It's, I've definitely logged a, a, quite a bit of time in already the past couple of days. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like that's the one that you were playing, uh, right before we started, right? 
Yeah, yeah, the yeah. One with the... I have an indie for breakfast on it too. So nice. yeah, so everybody should check that out. You should yeah. like, favorite, subscribe, smash that like, <laughs> smash button, that like button. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I think I think smash that like button is the new. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. Yeah. Which is every single YouTuber is saying now. Yeah. Hey guys, so and so here. Oh God. Sorry, I haven't made a video in so long. Yeah. Personal story. Personal story. And then at the end, like, favorite, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Something in the comments below. Yeah. God, man. We wouldn't have to do that if YouTube could do that for us. If they if they built it and they have they've gotten better at yeah. it. Their end card thing is really really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Actually, my favorite thing that they've done recently is the end card thing because you could customize them and save them as templates. Uh, and so you can record, like, if you watch any, like, uh, uh, Philly, uh, Philip, Philip DeFranco uh, video, um, at the end, usually, because he does his little vlog news thing, and then at the end, he's usually talking about the videos that are now, like, kind of flying into your screen. And that's all dynamic content, you know, so he could basically say, you know, he could basically swap it out for another video later and he could just, you know, point at it and be like, and then you can check this one out here because I have no idea what it is and blah, 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 and just check it out. So that's, it makes for, makes content pretty dynamic and pretty cool, cool. I think. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, yes. Smash that like button. Smash that like button. Yeah. I don't remember why we got on smashing like buttons. Um, (laughs) But yeah. So I guess that conversation's over now. Speaking of games that uh, we're playing, yeah. So speaking of games that we're playing currently, um, we we need to talk about PUBG in a second. But I just want to mm. give a quick mention for Near Automata, or however you actually pronounce any of that. Uh, I finally got around to playing it. Like it's a game that everyone was saying this game is really really good, and I was like, uh, I want to play it. But like it came out basically at the same time as Zelda and uh horizon and mass effect yeah so i was like fuck i'm not like i didn't even get to horizon i wanted to my my process was going to be play zelda play mass effect play horizon then play near and i never got i never really even got to horizon like that's still on my list of games that i need to go back and play um yeah but i finally like it was on uh, sale during the steam sale so i picked it up the game is fucking great <laughs> like the game is just really good. Oh man. It's um it gets a little bit super cheesy Japanese every once in a while. Uh Japanese storytelling is just it it's not really for me. That's part of why I, I tend to have issues with like actually keeping my attention through like Final Fantasy games and so on cuz mm-hmm. they they usually tend to be like and now it's the world is ending again. Wow, no one ever saw that coming, <laughs> but that's every fucking game. Um now the world yes. is ending, but that's the way it began. <gasps> Plot twist. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but no, the the story the story is still good. And what's really, really, really interesting about it is, it almost like it almost plays like if you took the movie Reservoir Dogs and tried to make a video game version of how the storytelling worked in that movie. Because you remember, Mm -hmm. it's just like all sort of spliced together and then you sort of piece it together over time. Um, The way it works in Nier is when you're playing it, the story is linear as you're playing it. It's not like actually jumping around in time as you're playing it, but you see it from one character's perspective. And then you finish the game, actually finish end credits, everything uh, with that character. And then you can click continue. And you click continue, it starts the storyline over, but from a different character's perspective. So... Hmm. Like the first couple playthroughs, I've just I've gone through the first. I'm not going to spoil anything either. I've gone through the first playthrough and I've started on the second one, and, and it's about two. the The first two playthroughs are uh, there's two two characters that kind of spend most of the game together. Uh, so I end up uh, in the second playthrough. I'm playing the second of those characters, uh, and so I end up spending a lot of time doing basically the same thing again that I was just doing. But even then, it still splinters off a bit, and it'll be like, "Oh yeah, so this is what this is what 9S was up to while 2B was doing this other thing earlier." That's kind of cool. Like, there's some parts of the game. Uh, again, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but there's some parts of the game that come up uh, a little bit further on that I'm really, really excited about because it's like, "Oh, 2B and 9S have been separated for a while. Wonder what 
uh, 9S is up to, and they, like, as I was playing this, I'm actually getting, like, a little bit of, like, nerd chills just talking about this because of how cool the storytelling is in this game. Um, like, there's points that they just sort of planted, like, oh, you, you hear from 9S very briefly, and he just sort of mentions that he's been doing a thing. And now I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to get to play the thing that 9S was doing when that was going on. It's, it's super, super cool. I'm really, really excited about it. Huh. It even, like... I, I, I haven't played it, but it's definitely the type of game that I know I would really love. I, I saw, I remember when the, they played the video, I think, like, last E3 or something. Mm. Um, and just seeing, I was, I was like, wow, it's like a fucking... It's, it's an action combat, like, bullet hell. You know, like, some of the boss battles that, that I saw. Um, so... Hmm. That's one of the biggest things that's weird about the game is like the first probably 10 minutes of the gameplay are you're, it's a shmup the entire time like yeah and it but it changes around constantly so like it'll be right now it's top down okay right now it's it's sort of 3D moving around now it's kind of kind of melee focused now it's kind of range focused and so on and that is that type of gameplay is maybe 5% of the game the rest of it is running around on the ground, action RPG sort of gameplay. Damn. But it's really good. <laughs> like, no, no it's not I know. A bad I'm saying, like, damn, like, shit. <laughs> I, need to, I need to play it. You do, yeah. Don't let this be like the time that I told you how good Mr. Robot was and you took oh forever. Oh, my to fucking <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.